Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about just how desperate Hasbro seems to be. Uh, you know, they laid a bunch of people off a couple of weeks before Christmas. It's not looking very mm -mm. good, but but like uh, right after that happened, they unvaulted a lot of their yes. HasLab projects. Very weird. And now, uh, these are the ones that they already had that they had met their goal when they had them done, right? Yeah. So they so were like leftovers. Like that's extras. what I'm thinking. Okay. I'm thinking they were leftovers. They did like a second chance offer. I'm sorry. I didn't know I would have bought you some of these. Oh, uh, it's okay. Yeah. Unicron, but I'm not paying $600 for Unicron, but this tells me that they're hard up for cash. Cause they're like, yeah, let's lay a bunch of people off. Oh, by the way, the stuff that people want. Yeah. We're going to do a, uh, do a second chance offer. And I guess it's sold out within a day. So that's, that's, that's one thing, right? Then we're also uh, going to talk about Magic the Gathering and uh, AI and uh, Wizards, you know, and because this was a big controversy, right? They were using AI generated art and people were joking. They were joking that the reason they laid off so many people working on Wizards projects was that they were going to replace them all with AI, right? Because they're like, yeah, this doesn't make sense. Why well, to be off. fair, we've done that before. We've just, you put AI prompts in and we got actually better Star Wars movies than what we got. I know, right? So, you know, I'm not saying that you should do that. Obviously, I think people should keep their jobs uh, if, if, if they can do their jobs well. Yeah, that's so a big th caveat there. That's that's it's just not it. prom and and you know a coffee shop. So I got one of the people that got laid off. Did they blame them for the franchise taking a hit or what? Or they just realize, you know, we speculated before. We don't think there's much of a future for D and D. At least Hasbro producing D and D as a physical game. Um, we think that they're probably going to push into they'll push into the video game right, space more. Right, I that. think, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think they're trying to do. Or, you know, if they want to make physical games, it might be they, they just license it out to, like, Paizo or something and be like, hey, you make D&D. We don't care. We're making more Baldur's Gate over here with Larian, uh, whatever. And that was actually the Larian CEO that came out and said that almost everybody he worked with Got at gone. Wizards got gone right before Christmas, which is freaking Yeah, which I don't condone that. I, I, I do feel bad. I do feel bad that people lost their job before Christmas. Um, but I also know that as of late, the stuff they've been put peddling has not been good. No. So there there's it's basically it's just like Disney. It's a death by a thousand cuts. So we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about what's going on with Hasbro. And uh right now I'm gonna talk to you about a tool that has helped me stay on top of Hasbro News. So if you guys have been following the channel, this week we've been covering the story with Hasbro. They cut 1,100 jobs after sluggish toy sales. We got this article uh, from the Wall Street Journal. We covered some other sources. However, we want to look into the situation a little bit more. So we found the article on the Wall Street Journal, but I was curious how else it was being reported by other media outlets. So I searched for it on Ground News. Ground News is an app and website that combines articles from all over the world in one place. This is a great utility if you're looking to get the full picture on a news story. They're sponsoring this video. So let me show you how this works. So I searched for the story in Ground News and in seconds it pulled up more than 70 other articles published on it. Look at this. All these different outlets, tons and tons of coverage of this uh, Hasbro layoff. Now you can see looking closer at the headlines, it seems that more of the sources are from the center. However, digging into this a little bit deeper, it looks like one outlet in particular is mentioning additional layoffs and that's El Pais. They're saying the strategic transformation at Hasbro is gonna result in a much larger workforce cut than originally expected. So El Pais is actually telling us how many people have been laid off in total because we've talked about this before, that it's not just the 1,100 or 1,000 jobs that were cut uh, this week. There actually were several at the beginning of the year as well. And the total number so far for this year for Hasbro is almost 30%, it's 29% of the workers, right before Christmas too. I mean, that's, that's terrible. But yeah, it's located in Spain. This is not a news outlet that a lot of Americans would, would even look at, but, thanks to ground news, we can get numbers from other countries. So next to every headline on ground news, we can see who owns the source and how credible their reporting is. So El Pais uh, is owned by a media conglomerate, uh, Prisa. 
and it says that it actually has a high factuality rate, and it does lean left. It's interesting to read the news this way because a corporate-owned source might have a vested interest in spinning the story differently as opposed to independent media. We run into this with companies that are owned by Hollywood studios, you know, kind of like Warner Brothers and CNN. Sometimes there's a conflict of interest. So thanks to Ground News, I can follow specific topics like Disney or video games. I mean, these are things we talk about on the channel all the time, and I get updates on information I might have otherwise missed. Ground News is fantastic if you're a news hound like we are, and you want to find the news and get the whole story. I think what they're doing is really important because it can be easy to let manipulative algorithms reinforce our own bubbles. Go to ground.news slash clownfish to check it out for yourself. You can subscribe through my link for less than a dollar a month or take advantage of their biggest discount of the year, 40% off unlimited access to the Vantage subscription this month only, which is what I use. I encourage you to check them out. The link is in the description. Thank you again, Ground News, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into the news. All right, guys, uh, welcome back. Welcome back to the video. So let's let's talk about this. I guess um, first we'll talk about them opening up the vault again on these, these uh, crowdfunded projects. Uh, according to Gizmodo, and I didn't even know about it until after it had already happened, Hasbro mm -hmm. unvaulted some of its rarest toy projects sold out of them immediately. I'm sure they did. If they, they probably didn't have a lot of them. It wasn't like they ran the... Did they, they were just selling stuff they already had, right? It wasn't like they ran the campaign to make more. No, they. which if they were smart... And they should have. That'll probably be what's next because they already have the molds for them, right? They can right. just run them again. But yeah, they probably had surplus, you know, because it, it... Again, you're dealing... The numbers yeah. you're dealing with the, with the Hasbro... If you had 9,000 orders, it's going to be cheaper to make 10 or even 20,000 units, you know, and then you got extra ones sitting here you can sell well, later. Because I know Mattel did something like this not that long ago either, when they, where they did like they had leftover collectors and things for Remasters of the Universe or Monster High or whatever. And they were ones they had left over and somebody had a little more of than others and they had re reissued it at a yeah. certain time and then they sold out, you know, right away too. So I'm thinking it was something like that. Yeah. So what they released in it was like a day. It was like, God, when was this? This was, uh, yeah, a couple December days 18th. ago. Yeah. So just a couple of days ago, um, they're already gone. They, they're already gone. They had the war for Cybertron Unicron, uh, victory saber, which I actually did kind of want him. I wish well, I, I didn't know. Him. I I know. I told you, no, you asked me if I want him. I said, not for that price, which is a hundred percent true. I didn't want him for that price. The ghostbusters proton pack, uh, the G.I. Joe Sky Striker Jet and two versions of the relaunch of HeroQuest. As of this writing, this is a couple of days ago, HeroQuest and either of its forms are still available. But the rest were starting at a low, as low as $180 all the way up to $575. That'd be Unicron, $575. But he's basically, he's not really to scale, but he's huge. He's That's a, another reason we don't want it. Besides him spending the money. Where am going to put him? That's just it. I, mean, I, love, I still love, not related to Hasbro, but that the Grimlock they had. That oh, was the, the robotic Grimlock. The I would have yeah, like mm, loved that, but it's like, yeah, it's like, it's not that much, but it's really high. And I was like, yeah, I can't justify that. Yeah. It says makes sense. Now, a lot of these toys were maybe on the demand for their crowdfunding campaign. So Hasbro was never going to have a lot of them on hand to sell. Uh, yeah. And if they did, they'd wind up at Ollie's. <laughs> yeah. You know? No, not these ones. I doubt that. Well, we've seen the other ones they had that were not HasLab, but like exclusives that have ended up at Ollie's. Yeah, um, we've actually seen that before. We which is bought some. Surreal, you know, because it's kind of like, wait, wait, these aren't supposed to be here. They're supposed to be like super duper limited. But uh, yeah, they have a lot in stock available. If a near, nearly $600 transformer sold right, out. Right, well, that just tells me that there's a demand for it. So if it was me, I would reopen it. But then again, people would be mad because it was supposed to be limited, which is one of the reasons why they got it and you're making more. It might drive the value down. So I, I, get, I guess fans probably get pissed about that, which I can kind of understand, but still. So glad the revenue from this will go to the CEOs instead of the 1,100 people they just fired. It's a fundraiser for a children's charity, this guy says, but you go edge of the Lord. A fact not mentioned anywhere in the article. That's true. It actually, it's kind of a, a footnote. If you think all the money is going to charity, you're naive as hell. Uh, no, I, I agree. It's not all. They said that, that they're going to make a donation to their own children's hospital. Yeah, their own children's hospital. But they yes. didn't say all the money. No. No, but that's – okay. So got the cynic in me – the cynic in me says they're doing this to incentivize people because it's the holidays 
to incentivize you know, Merry Christmas to all of all of you who got uh, laid off uh, to incentivize people to give because people will give more during the holidays. This is the way it is. We've been trained to do it. This is the way it is. And they're desperate because they're just like cracking, cracking it open for a day. The vault, all the stuff that they have sitting around from HasLab, which I have to wonder what the future of HasLab is now, you know, but they're going to they're going to get rid of all this stuff. Maybe, I I, I think know. the future of Hasla is actually probably not bad because and, and, and that way they don't make the toy until you know they have buyers for the toy. That's actually, I think they're going to go more that way, especially on big things, because then they know they have the people that want to purchase it. Yeah, I think that um, that is that is basically where we're going to go for everything. I think I think a lot of things are going to go direct to consumer. We're seeing more and more of this with uh, toy companies doing it and, you know, record companies doing it and people crowdfunding comics and games and stuff like that. But then what happens is the retailers get cut out completely, but there also isn't a lot of surplus either. So that, yeah, you're right. Cause that cuts out, that cuts out Ollie's, mm -hmm. you know, you just make, Oh, 10,000 people want this GI Joe thing. Then we make 10,000. No, you make like probably 15 20. or, you know, not that much, but maybe 12. And then you have two extras cases, to replace. Yeah, case, if they until break someone's broken yeah. and then whatever's left over, you just sell again. Yeah. You know, then you're done. Then you made your thing and that's it. And you got the mold if you want to make more later. You know, fans are happy because if you don't make more later, that keeps the value, the values up. The resellers are happy because mm -hmm. you can go to like PowerCon and pay through the nose for mm -hmm. you know some of this stuff. Like, I don't know what a Unicron goes for now, but like a lot of money. So we got that on one hand, right? So let's, uh, let's talk about, uh, Magic the Gathering now. They've, they said they were going to ban AI art completely because they got busted for using uh, AI art in, I think, Magic Card. It was both Magic Cards and in uh, Dungeons and Dragons source books. Right. But now they have a new policy. But it's only in final products. Final pro. So you technically could have AI generate a pose and then you could trace over it, right? Mm hmm but the AI is doing most of the heavy lifting. It's doing the perspective and it's adding, you know, nine fingers on one hand. But as long as the basic pose is okay, you just cut a couple of fingers off and you're fine. Um, this is coming from Gizmodo. They've been, man, they've been after Hasbro uh, pretty hard. Magic the Gathering former, formally bans the use of generative AI in final products. Final products. Uh, an error in judgment earlier this year. <laughs> yeah, an error yeah, in judgment call like it. earlier this year when D&D &D artists uh, confirmed they had used AI programs to finish several pieces of art, including the source book Glory of the Giants, saw wizards publicly ban the use of AI tools. But that artist was known to be an AI artist. They're like, oh, it was just a mistake. It was, yeah. No, they didn't. Like their whole Twitter profile, their whole profile was like, I'm Joe, the AI artist who does AI art for people who want to buy AI art. Oh my God, Hasbro didn't know. People who don't draw that good, but wish they could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Joe, the artist who does AI art for people who can't draw too good. Um... Yeah, so they updated. They said the post has been updated to include clarification from wizards regarding the extent of... Do they have anybody left to make clarifications? Regarding the extent of guidelines for creatives working with magic and D&D. &D. Um, yeah, so here's what they're saying. For 30 years, Magic the Gathering has been built on the innovation, ingenuity, and hard work of talented the, people. We've been built on the backs of people who do really good stuff that we just took credit for and money. Right. Uh, they sculpt a beautiful creative game. That isn't changing, a new statement said. Our internal guidelines remain the same with regard to artificial intelligence tools. We still require artists, writers, and creatives contributing to Magic the Gathering to refrain from using AI generative tools to create final, final magic products. We work with some of the most talented artists and creatives in the world, and we believe those people are what makes magic well, I, great. I do agree they work with amazing artists and creatives. That's true. Yeah, the wording in the D&D &D statement. Okay, here's the D&D &D statement. Um, they said the D&D &D statement says they have to make it clear that artists must refrain from using AI-generated art as part of their art creation process for developing D&D &D okay, art. Okay, so they're not allowed to use it at all for D&D. &D. In D&D, &D, but that's not what they said in Magic. No, Magic, and I, I'm sorry, it's the same people. It's Wizards. I, I What is going to, and are, are people going to know? Is the public going to know? I mean, if somebody generates a pose and then they paint over it digitally is anybody going to know to be honest i i don't think so because it might be the ai comes up with you know a better look or a better pose or better composition than or the better art. story or better story you know what i'm saying like 
if the general public doesn't catch on that it actually is AI, I, I don't think, I think they're just going to let it slide. I think the only reason, the only reason that they had to make any statement at all is because they got busted. They didn't get well, busted. Even, even Gizmodo saying, though, it's interesting about the difference in how they worded it. Because the one said final only. And the other one says, basically, you can't use it at all. Yeah. You know, and they even mentioned that it's a little interesting. I said, yeah, I said, and wording in D&D statement is distinctly different from that in the one of Magic the Gathering, which only says the final Magic products cannot use generative AI. Um, but then any point in the creative process, like they said with D&D. And that's what I, first thing I noticed when the headline was final, I'm like, well, that just sounds to me like they can use it, you know, up to that point. And then when you're doing the final art piece, you have to do it yourself. Well, now they went to them and they said that wizards uh, said that the guidelines are the same. Therefore, the use of technology is restricted from any part of the creative process. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. If they're at the all. same, then why isn't the same? Why isn't the same statement? Yeah, I don't believe that at all. I think what is people don't yeah, know won't hurt them kind of mentality. Well, that's just it. Because here, look at who they laid off. They said the magic statement also comes in the wake of the major layoffs at, at uh, Wizards' parent company Hasbro. Last week, the Wall Street Journal reported that Hasbro plans to lay off 1,100 staff members over the next six months with many creatives creatives across Wizards, D&D, and Magic teams confirming they were part of the layoffs. Just this week, the company faced backlash for opening a position for a digital artist at Wizards of the Coast in the wake of the job cuts which totaled roughly a fifth of Hasbro's current workforce across all of its Well, divisions. it is odd they opened for a position for somebody when they got rid of other people, but digital art doesn't necessarily mean AI. Well, here's the job description. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Okay. The job description specifically highlights that the role includes having to refine and modify illustrative artwork for print and digital media through retouching, color correction, adjusting ink density, resizing, cropping, generating clipping paths and hand brushing spot plate masks, as well as use digital retouching wizardry to extend cropped characters and adjust visual elements due to legal and art direction requirements, which critics suggested carry the implication that the role would involve iterating on and polishing art created through generative AI. I think that's what's going on. I think, because we saw this with uh, different news outlets, that people got gone and then they would basically bring in a bot farmer. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we have an editor that's going to oversee all the AI generated articles and you're going to have to tweak them. I think they're going to hire people that are totally cool with coming in and just being like, yeah, let's just use AI to generate a whole bunch of stuff. And this one person is going to do the work of like 15 freelancers. That's what yeah, I think is going to happen. Why would you need somebody to, to retouch extended or crop characters? Why wouldn't you just have the artist do it? Yes. Because you give them the specs. If the artists were going to do it, you give them the specs and you mm -hmm. say, that these are the dimensions that we need. And it is normal when you're dealing with, you know, freelancers that, you know, somebody in house has to tweak this stuff or whatever and work with it. Even when we publish comics, you know, somebody still has to put those comics together for pre-press and all that. But uh, this sounds like it's more extensive, extending the artwork. Oh, you mean if you need to have a bleed on it and you generated it and it didn't have, okay, so you can just go back in and tell the, Tell the AI program to just extend it another half an inch or something on all sides or try to airbrush it in or Photoshop it in or something. I'm telling you, that's what's going on. They're, they're cutting people. They're not going to spend a bunch of money. They're going to be like, how much money can we save if we get rid of freelancers? How much backlash can we avoid if we just hire somebody to do this stuff and, and not talk about it. We'll just feed all their art into the thing, train it to draw like all these people. And then, you know, basically. Well, that's what it's basically is going on right now. Um, you look at like, if you ask uh, an AI program, you know, uh, to to generate fancy art, it's it's more than likely taking cues from, you know, D&D &D art or magic art that's floating around on the internet. And that's how it's, it's being trained to draw. So it's basically being trained to draw in that style by freelancers, you know, decades and decades of, of uh, fantasy artwork that's being lifted, plus, you know, all the people out on, you know, DeviantArt and Tumblr and whatever. So, yeah, and the tools are going to get better and better. And if all you need is a, a nice image on a card, I don't give a crap where it comes from. Most normal people don't give a crap where it comes from. And they can make a lot more profit, and that's what Hasbro needs, you know? So, I don't know, guys. Sounds pretty desperate to me, personally. Are we going to wrap this one up? Yeah. I think we're going to wrap this one up. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.